Okay. Hello there, my name is Abdelaziz Salim. I'm a senior here at ACA and I'm going to be presenting about audio drugs slash binaural beat technology. And I'll be presenting to my three peers, me, myself, and I. <laughs> I have a quick table of contents about what I'm going to be talking about in brief. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the, my introduction. In my introduction, I'm going to be pretty much in summary, I'm just going to be talking about binaural beats and how they relate to TOK, if they really work or if it's just a placebo effect that you think that they work, and the positives and negatives of audio drugs, whether they're good for you or they're bad for you, or both. So first, my knowledge question, here's a quick TOK chart. And what role does technology, natural sciences, human sciences, and mathematics play in the interpretation of sense perception, reason, and emotion? Very long, dull question. <laughs> So, my claims are, how do these relate to these? Well, how does technology relate to sense perception, reason, and emotion? Well, through medicine, medicine pretty much relates to all three of these. All together will relate to these because with medicine advances, we have, medicine changes your sense perception for like antidepressant pills and emotion-related diseases. Your reason for like, let's say, people with OCD or ADHD, it helps them focus. And then with emotions, it also relates to your senses and such. And then mathematics, the only reason that mathematics is relevant in audio drugs is because we talk about wavelengths and frequencies which need to be calculated in order to get a, a desired effect. My real life situation is how does the brain behind, how does the science behind audio drugs and our binaural beats affect the neurological factors in our brain? So pretty much what are, what is the science of audio drugs, what are binaural beats and how do they affect us? Let's define audio drugs. Audio drugs are pretty much, without looking at this, it's pretty much just waves put into your ear when you listen to them by headphones. You have to be with your eyes covered in a relaxed state, so pretty much laying down, only focusing on the sound that you have. And with that, it should affect your brain by, by, uh, by uh, messing with the factors of uh, neurons in your cortex of the brain. And it relates pretty much to music, because if you think about it, when you listen to a, a music that you enjoy, it pretty much it makes you get pumped, it makes you happy, it makes you relatively excited and extravagant in a way. Here's a quick chart that pretty much it shows that by the frequency that we have and in, in the waves that are going into our ears, the name of that frequency and then what its effect is based on what we, what we can do with it pretty much. So each wave pretty much has a different has a different effect and what it can do to us and how it can help us or bother us in a way. So let's say if I wanted to like study harder, I'd either use beta waves for busy and cognition or I'd use gamma waves for higher mental activity so I can work harder. And how does the science actually work itself? Well, we have two headphones on the sides of your head and you have your head in the middle. This headphone puts in a specific frequency of audio, and this headphone puts in a specific frequency of audio. And from the laws of physics of relativity, two things that go in opposite directions, their, their uh, magnitudes subtract each other. So 500 minus 510, you get, a 10, make, you get a 10 hertz beat inside of your head, and that is the desired effect that you're getting. So you're getting, if we go back to the chart, you're getting a Mu waves effect, which is in the 10, which is in this range here. Then the history behind it, this guy, his name is Heinrich Wilhelm Dove, he's a German who discovered it about 200 years ago. He discovered that the human brain can only interpret frequencies from 2 to 20,000 hertz of audio into your ear. And what he did was he was the first person to actually try a form of audio waves in which he discovered that 1,000 kilohertz is what it needs to become a drug, what it needs to become, that you become addicted to it. Because what happens is that 1,000 hertz is, is calculated to the the diameter of the average human brain and it wraps around the effect around the entire brain so you feel like you're immersed in an experience. Now this perspective. What we say is that is that binaural beats have been proven as a medical have been proven to be used as medical uh, weapons per se. That they can be used to cure migraines. And this is a recent uh, a recent technology that was recently discovered in, within the maybe past two, three months only. And it actually reduces severe headaches as well. And it also, it's also be using to improve self-improvement, in which you can listen to these audio tracks that are available on the internet for free, and pretty much they grasp your attention with weird sounds. It starts off with like, 
you have like these weird sounds happening in your ear that you can't, you've not really heard about before. And then you have a guy that tells you to be in a relaxed state. That pretty much he tells you to lay down, to relax in a deep and calming voice like this so that you try to become serene a bit. And then you, you only focus on what he's telling you. So let's say, for example, then here you want to listen to an audio drug about courage or procrastination or self-confidence. You listen to this and pretty much he would tell you, what he tells you is going straight into the cortex of your brain which actually affects you instead of like a normal conversation between one and one. Here are some useful binaural beats that are available on YouTube for free that you can use about visualization, courage, strong, wisdom, persistence, anxiety, procrastination. And then with every good comes bad. There are harmful binaural beats. <laughs> Teens using digital drugs to get high. Audio that leads you high is alarming authorities in Saudi Arabia and Lebanon. There's this program on the internet known as iDoser. It's about $5 to buy, and you can buy MP3s to go with it. And pretty much it stimulates the effect of dopamine on your brain, which is like having, in taking real drugs, but in the form of ecstasy or cocaine or marijuana. And it's actually a negative externality, externality of consumption because it's actually harming you and it's affecting you badly in that way. And the dose lasts about, let's say you listen to 15 minutes of this track, you get about 30 minutes of effect after, after that. So how do we address this? How do we try to control this since it's something on the internet and something that's not like physical drugs that we can have conf confiscated from people? Well, that's a problem that's still to be solved because this technology is relatively recent. And with such because of the new internet security laws and internet privacy laws that are being passed worldwide, it's going to be extremely difficult for the, the world to try to control files that are being spread around. Especially with things that we have like torrents, private storages, clouds. All of these things cannot be controlled and anyone can be giving these out without being caught because you cannot see digital audio and things on people. And then also if we were to try to form like a single organization that, that uh, protects the internet or is like a single country that controls the internet worldwide, that would fl fail also because each country has its own laws for the internet and that are different from others. For example, in China you cannot say anything on the internet that has to do with, or is offensive against the leading, the leading presidents. Anything about the current president or the past president is illegal. But in the States, there's free, freedom of speech where you can say whatever you want about the president. <coughs> in conclusion, with all good comes bad, this is a step forward in innovation and medicine, it affects your emotion, reasoning, and senses. And yes, it does work, but it's not actually placebo. Sources? Thank you. Have you maybe uh, oh. yeah, like, uh, yes, do it yourself? yourself? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so listening to these music facts would actually like give give the the feeling of being as high as if, if you were to take like consume actual drugs. Yes, in the same way, and you would get addicted to it in the same form. Yes. What about the other negative effects that, that come with these drugs? So, for example, obviously, you know, if you take these drugs, there's you know, chemical reactions in your body, and there's the negative effects that flow from that. I'd imagine that because there's no chemicals being taken, it's just sound. Whilst it simulates the effects, do the other negative effects come? Or they are actually because they still form an addiction where you where you develop a relevant dependency on that, where you need to keep taking it, and just like in real drugs, you need to keep strengthening the dose in order to reach your your satisfaction rate, and so you keep going until your brain pretty much becomes fried. Any other questions?